I am Dungeon Thrasher Lenny Blade and this is the Dungeons and Thrashers show. More specifically, this is the Adventures in Adventures in Middle Earth and this is part 7. And we have come all the way to the Mirkwood campaign. This is a 30 year setting. That's right, this this setting spans 30 years of in-game time. Um, so uh, all that talk about in previous uh, in previous uh, supplements, like for example the Witherland uh, adventures about the passing of years and how everything is supposed to feel epic, it came to a roaring pinnacle of epicness with this one, the Mercury campaign. Right, so if we take a look at the Willowland Adventures, for example, this is a six to seven year long campaign, and this is a 30 year campaign. So why isn't this book at least this thick? Let's find out. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's take a look. All right, so we're back at the table here again. And so this is another companion book. Uh, to the excellent Rovanion region guide, which you will need to run the Mirkwood campaign properly. Uh, b because of the sheer scope of the campaign, there are rules for uh, holdings, you know, how to gain one, how to improve its rating, and how to take care of its upkeep. This leads to a new fellowship phase undertaking called Tend to Holding, and here the character's standard of living comes into play as the DC of the upkeep rises with the standard of living, ranging from 10 to 20, meaning that if you're rich, it's more difficult to tend to a holding uh, uh, than uh, if you're from a frugal background, for example, or a standard of living. So, uh, But this role can be made with advantage if you spend inspiration or if the character has an irrelevant skill. Uh, so, and, and also don't forget to add the, the hero's proficiency bonus as well to that. I would also personally recommend lore masters to remember to use the heroic heritage optional rule found in the Breland region guide because of this scope. Because especially human players, remember this is a 30 year campaign, so human players should uh, breed, so to speak, should have kids, or at least uh, have someone in mind for this uh, heritage, because you may have to retire uh, before the campaign is finished. Uh, and also, <laughs> I mean, some uh, some uh, characters could die as well. That's certainly uh, a risk. That should be present in any campaign, really. But especially here, because of the epic scope. Uh, and also, I would remind players to try to use the Write a Letter Fellowship undertaking uh, from... Is that from the Breland Region Guide as well? Yes. Uh, because information is vital, and sometimes it's in need of haste. And remember that there's no such thing as, you know, teleporting or anything like that, or mind message or anything like that so news travel fairly slowly in middle earth and sometimes time is of the essence so don't forget to use the write a letter fellowship undertaking and after this we come to the campaign proper so in the year of 2951 which is about five years after the recommended starting year of the campaign sauron sent ring wraiths to reclaim his dark fortress of Dol Guldur in the south of Mirkwood. Uh, and the following decade, Sauron used Dol Guldur as a base for launching large-scale attacks on Lorien and the Woodland Realm, uh, primarily. So basically, this book lists the event that happened in chronological order, you know, during this time in and around Mirkwood, and some events even happen as far away as Rohan or Gondor that you can tie into this campaign as well. So the book is divided into five major sections. And each year has events and uh, some relevant information listed. Now here is what makes or breaks 
this book for many lore masters. So while you do get a plethora of <laughs> adventure seeds and characters and places and events, things like that, you do have to fill in a lot of the details yourself. So if you're the kind of lore master or dungeon master that runs uh, published adventures only and run them you know if you don't if you're not used to deviate and improvise this could be a problem or if you're a little bit strung on time like maybe you've got kids or something else that occupies your time this will take some time to prepare so think about that. So if you're the kind of DM that you don't really, you just want to read the adventure and be done with it and then run it, maybe this is not for you, this campaign, because you do have to do a lot of work yourself. Uh, I mean, I enjoy this. You know, this is the, this suits my uh, LM style perfectly because I, I tend to derive from even published adventures when I do run them. So... This is perfect but me, for me, but just uh, keep that in mind. There are also several opportunities for mass combat and large scale, more you know, strategic fighting and you know the moving of forces and things like that. And they are usually resolved by these nifty little mini tables uh, in in the adventure, in the campaign book. There's also, of course. The uh, journey events table that are these tables are sort of tailored to for this campaign, and there's also a little uh, bestiary at the end, or bestiary, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, uh, where uh, some of the Nazgul are are detailed, and that's pretty cool. So you can use that. So yeah, as you can see at the end here. Uh, the map, the this is the lore master's map, and you can see how detailed it is. I mean, there are so many places for adventure here, and this is really cool. And if you compare this to the player's map, you know uh, there are so many things on here. Obviously, this is spanning thirty years, so not all the places are everywhere all the time. <laughs> if you know what I mean. So, but still, like the as you can see, there is so much to do here. I would personally recommend this to anyone, but think about your own lore master style before you make the purchase. And again, this has also been marked up due to uh, it not. All right, so I just wanted to tag this on here to, to the end of the video. I forgot to mention that uh, a lot of the text in the Mercury campaign uh, evolves around what the characters are doing. And if the characters do that, then you should do this. If uh, this has happened, they should do that, and if this, then that. Uh, I just feel this is important for uh, lore masters to know whether they want to buy this or not, uh, making that decision, because there's a lot of ifs here, and that's an important word of this book. So, I uh, just wanted to mention that, and uh, like I said, if you've got a lot of time, or if you enjoy tinkering around with your adventures and adding stuff, then this is a really good uh, purchase. If you don't, then maybe you should uh, go with Wilderland Adventures or maybe uh, one of the other adventure books that I will take a look at later, like Erebor Adventures or uh, Eriador Adventures. So uh, anyways, till next time.